First story. I married my dying friend to get custody of his daughter from her evil mom. Should I tell my now husband that I'm pregnant, while he's already spiraling about leaving his daughter? Hey, this is really SHTTY. But I'm 39, the mother of two teens, and married to a 40-year-old guy, I'll call Steve. Sorry if this is all a mess. It's a bit of a messed up story. The marriage was basically one of convenience. Steve and I are both divorced and have been friends for decades. This past spring, Steve found out he has a rare cancer, and the doctors gave him six eight months to live. Three years ago, Steve sought out the daughter he had before his marriage from a one-night stand in his twenties. When he found her, he discovered his daughter ten years old. I'll call her Sarah was being horrifically abused by her mother, who had had some kind of mental break, I guess. Anyway, he spent a year fighting for custody of this child he hadn't seen since she was a baby, and he eventually got it, then spent two-ish years working with her and getting her to heal and trust him, and surprise, he's effing dying. Anyway, the marriage thing was mostly about Sarah. We were advised that getting married would be the quickest and easiest way to make sure I get custody of Sarah when Steve passes, in case Sarah's mother decides to try for custody again. And as a side note, I 100% do want custody of Sarah, no question. I love her very much. She's already like a sister to my two kids, who are similar in age. That girl has gone from not owning a effing pair of shoes to being a funny, smart, all-around great kid. Anyway, we got married on paper no wedding, and Steve and Sarah moved into my house. All the kids knew what was happening, and were surprisingly cool with it. Yeah, so stuff happened between me and Steve. He confessed he had been in love with me for a long time, and I just kind of said it all back to him even though I'm not 100% sure of my feelings. It all just happened fast, I don't know. Maybe that was wrong of me, but I wanted his time left to be happy, and I do care for him a lot. In the last few weeks, Steve has gone downhill very quickly. He is still mostly at home, except for a few short hospital stays. There are nurses that come every day, and he is on strong pain medicine, so sometimes he's himself, but a lot of times he's really out of it. He's basically just here. Dying right in front of my effing eyes, and it stinks. And I just found out this week that I'm pregnant. I'm not sure that I want to keep the baby. I'm old as dirt with three teenage kids to think of. I'm strongly considering not telling Steve at all. But it feels very wrong. Telling him also feels wrong. He's more upset about leaving Sarah than he is about dying. So finding out he's leaving another kid behind will probably only hurt him. Having an abortion feels wrong. Keeping the kid feels wrong. Nothing about this is okay. And I really just want a cigarette and a bottle of wine. TLDR, ha 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 ha, life sucks. Comment from OP. There's not enough room on the entirety of Reddit to explain me and Steve's relationship. But I'll give it a try, if only to sort it out for myself. We were friends. I got married young a big, big mistake. By the time I got divorced, he was married. After he got divorced, I was dealing with major health issues with my youngest. Then Sarah became his focus. Somewhere in that mess, we worked full-time jobs, buried three parents between us, and made and received late-night drunken calls to and from our exes. Well, sometimes the calls from my ex were from a jail cell, but it was always about time. There was just never time. This past year, being single parents together, we were a great team. Steve taught my oldest how to drive. Steve called me at work when his daughter got her period God. That was funny. We had each other's backs. I was starting to fall for him. It seemed like it was inevitable. It seemed right. It seemed like we finally had time. But we didn't. And then everything just got rushed, pushed together, and compressed. Like someone was pushing fast forward on our lives, or the writers were rushing the ending to go work on Star Wars. So yeah, I love Steve. But the last few months have felt weird and artificial. I'm grieving for the relationship we could have had we were supposed to have had damn it more than the one we do. Anyway. Go hug your loved ones, or whatever the moral is here. I wrote more than I meant to, and I'm effing crying again. Update added in the original post. I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep the baby and tell Steve, but I want to sleep on it first and Steve is definitely out for the night. Thanks for listening. Going to do the dishes, feed the cat, and go to bed. I will continue to read and respond to comments when I can, and hopefully update at some point before the weekend. Update 2 added to the original post. I saw Objin this morning way too early seriously. Why are you even open at 8 a.m.? And here's the twist. I'm not a month pregnant. I'm like three plus months pregnant. No, I'm not relieved. I'm pissed off that I had another choice taken away from me.
I'm sick of my life feeling like a speeding train that I have no control over. I'm sick of everyone romanticizing everything. I'm tired of everyone saying I'm strong when I feel like I'm just doing the bare minimum to keep my head above water. I'm just going to be angry for a little while. Thanks. Comment from OP. So actual conversation I had with my Omjin. Less than 30 minutes ago paraphrase. Me. Is the old IUD and they're dangerous to the baby. Doctor. I took that out five years ago when it expired. Me. I have no memory of that. Are you sure it was me? Doctor. You said you didn't want another because all men are trash and you were planning on running away and joining a lesbian commune. Me. Yeah, that sounds like me. In my defense, five years ago was when my younger child was having a tumor removed from his spine, and his father showed up at the hospital with a 20-year-old girlfriend. So yeah, I may have blocked a few things out from around that time in my life. Update 3 added to the original post. I found out I'm like 15 weeks pregnant, not 4. Baby is a girl. She will be loved and a welcome part of our family. I will tell Steve. Feel free to keep commenting, as I enjoy commenting back. But the decision has been made. Thanks everyone. Edit. I've gotten like 5 messages that you can't tell SX of the baby that early. And y'all can go take it up with the tech, who seemed pretty effing sure of herself. In the comments. OP. I'm about to vomit on you. I'm so sorry. Last night when I posted, I was just sad and scared. And then so many people reframed everything in this romantic way. And I kind of got swept up in it and went to bed thinking, I would choose to keep the baby and everything would be amazing and beautiful. And blah blah blah. Then I woke up this morning, and was just kind of slap happy, and in a daze. Then I found out I'm way further along than I thought. And the reality of it just completely knocked the wind out of my sails. I'm mad that I never really had a choice. And I'm mad that people think it's so romantic to have a dying man's baby inside me. And I'm mad that I came home ready to talk to Steve, and I can't because Sarah is skipping school again. And I get that she wants to spend time with her dad. But I made a effing deal with her, that if she finishes this week, she can take next week off and even worked it out with her teacher FFS. And they've started Stranger Things Season 3. And I want to just scream at Steve. Why are you starting a new show, when you don't even know if you'll live to finish a sandwich? And of course I can't yell that because you can't yell at dying people, and tell them they're dying. Nor can you yell at them to just stop effing dying. Which is what I really want to do. And he's all doped up and going on about how he's Hopper and Sarah is 11. And no, you're effing not. You've sat at a desk and got fat the last 10 years and you've never punched anyone in your life. And you goddamn well did not get that girl by leaving egos in the woods. You were in court for a goddamn year. I was there. And it was hell you are so whole. I'm tired of everyone glossing over the SHTTY truth, that everything in life is like 90% just annoying maintenance of our SHTTY. Gross meat sack bodies and paperwork. And you get maybe 10% of the real, actual stuff that matters. And when that stuff happens, you're not even ready for it, good or bad. Because you're tired and worried about bills, and you're only half paying attention. And then later you're like, oh, that was the most romantic night of my life. Because you chose to remember it that way. When really at the time you were just thinking about how you wanted to take off your itchy pants, and wondering if you fed the cat. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go buy groceries. Woods books water. I'm blown away by your situation. I have a sense, though not to romanticize things, lol that if you have this baby which it sounds like you have to at this point. You will totally figure this out. You will be a great mom to all four kids. Some good days, some bad days. But all four will be functioning adults. Which is all we can really ask for. Good luck. And I'm sorry for what you are going through. Angel Munster. Decide if you are keeping it. If you are, tell him. He can make videos and cards and do whatever you can give your child as they grow up. It would be awesome to know that even if my dad died before I was born, he had so much love for me that he made these things for me. OP. Yes, I'm keeping it. Her. Of course, I am. I'll tell him. We'll make videos in SHT. Did anyone else see that episode of Queer? I where the mom tried to write cards for her twin sons for every birthday before she died. And she couldn't finish them because it was too sad to think of all the things she was going to miss. Yeah, now I'm sad again. Angel Munster. Yes. This is also a storyline on the big C. It will be sad for both of you, but push through. Your child will have a relationship with their father through these cards, videos, or whatever you decide to do. Otherwise, all they will have are pictures and your memories of him. If they get actual things from their father, they will feel like they are growing up with him in some way. Deleted. How did it go? Was he happy? OP. So I cuddled up to him, showed him the ultrasound picture, and said, 
This is our girl or something like that. He was quiet for a minute. Then he said, she'll have a sister. Which is not what I expected. But I agreed that yes, his daughter will have a sister. Then he asked if I was going to be okay. And I said yeah, I'll be okay. And we laid there quiet for a long time. And that was about it. He's been quiet today, but sometimes he's like that. I need to tell the kids and ask him about making a video or letters or cards. But I want to give him some thinking space first. So I can't really answer about his emotional state yet. This is all I know so far. Tomorrow is my last day of work before I take FMLA. So there should be more time to talk in the coming days or weeks. Final update added to the original post. I am not sure if anyone will ever check this post again. But for anyone who finds it in the future, Steve passed a few days ago. We're all okay. Things are okay. I'm doing fine. Paperwork is a B. I'm caught up on laundry. Everyone who read my comment that Steve and Sarah were watching Stranger Things Season 3 and didn't warn me about the ending can die in a Reddit fire. It was traumatic. What a world. Second story. So-called mom, who neglected and abandoned my daughter for her drug addiction, losing her parental rights, came back demanding she be included in her life. So I told her she does not deserve to call herself a mother and just an egg donor. Ada? I 26 F am engaged to my fiancé 33 M Brandon and have grown close with his daughter Lucy 4F, Lucy's biological mother, Natalie 30F, has lost all physical and legal rights to her daughter due to neglecting her severely when Lucy was an infant. Not to get into great detail, but Natalie is addicted to opioids, and Lucy had a withdrawal period. Lucy, and I have gotten close as I have dated my fiancé for almost four years. Lucy was born nine months before I came into Brandon's life. We met at the hospital as Lucy had some major health issues in her infancy due to Natalie and I have a chronic illness that pushes me into pancreatitis. She now calls me mama, even though neither I nor my fiancé asked her to do so. I read her bedtime stories, and I'm helping her learn to add and subtract. During a get-together for Brandon's birthday, I hosted at his house. Natalie showed up with her new boyfriend. Neither were invited. She tried to give Lucy a hug, but Lucy didn't know her. She came to Brandon and me instead, and told us a stranger had come. She then asked me to make up her plate because Natalie began to throw a tantrum in the middle of the party, shouting about how she was going to take Brandon to court and, because she's the mom, she'll win full custody because she deserves to be in her daughter's life. During this time, Brandon took Lucy inside because she had started crying because she was scared. I admit, I snapped. I told her she had no right to call herself a mother because she abandoned Lucy to go get high and sleep around. She hurt my baby so badly that she's four and needs to go to therapy and has physical health issues because of her. She refuses to put her baby first, and at best, she's an egg donor. I told her to get the F out of my house and never come back. She wailed all the way back to her boyfriend's car. I admit, I think I went too far. I know that drug addiction is a disease, and people who suffer from substance abuse disorder need help. I think I went too far by saying she was, at best, an egg donor. Brandon said I did nothing wrong. Ada. Final verdict. NTA. Relevant comments. NTA. Mary. Then adopt Miss Lucy. As soon as we finalize our marriage. NTA. But prepare for the worst. It's concerning that she got into your birthday celebration. Who told her about the time and place? Who opened the doors? Talk with a lawyer about all the possibilities. The ex-mom is delusional and selfish. There are two most probable outcomes. Your extreme and emotional reaction knocked some sense into her that she has zero chance to make it work. Or, worse, she will retaliate and fight for custody just to prove to herself that you were not right, and she is not a bad mother. I think my STB mail told Natalie's mom. Lucy has a relationship with her biological grandma. It sounds like it's time for a talk. This may have been a slip-up, or you may have a leak. It was a slip-up. She posted about the last BBQ of the year, and, happy birthday, on Facebook. NTA. This person showed up uninvited at your fiancé's birthday party and became unhinged. If it happens again, call the police so it is documented. I know she is an addict, but she has no right to just show up. Have her parental rights been terminated? It sounds like she has lost her rights, but there is something called a TPR. Also, if Brandon had an attorney, he should let them know this happened. Let Lucy's therapist know too. You are, in effect, the mother, and I hope you get married right away. Yes, they have been terminated. OP, in your post. You mentioned that Natalie has left the family to sleep around. Do you and your partner know for sure that he is the biological father? I have no idea where you live or how family law works under these circumstances. 
but maybe just make sure you are on the safe side. All the best for you and your little family. Yes, to get full custody, Lucy and Brandon had to get a DNA test. He's the dad. Why did he get an addict pregnant in the first place? He did not know she was an addict at the time, and she poked holes in their BC. Super off topic, but right. And in nine months, he found someone else to essentially become a mom to her. Oof. We were friends almost a year before we started dating. My room was the one next to the PICU, and he'd pop in for a chat every so often when we were there at the same time. He is a walking green flag who takes responsibility for his actions. So instead of him being concerned for his kid, he comes and flirts with you. You were only 22 at the time, and he was almost 30. Why are you fighting his battles for him? He should have been speaking with BM, not you. Plus, he had a new chick to raise his kid for him. You see green flags, while I see red. He walked into a quiet room, while Lucy was getting a baby. He looked exhausted, so I let him play Assassin's Creed Roman II on my console, and we got talking. I told him I wasn't perma, but was having an extended stay, so if he wanted to talk to an adult about anything but babies, my room was between the PICU and the mat ward. Esh. She shouldn't have shown up, causing a scene that went unannounced. But she's not your baby. This was not your fight to have. It was your partnership. You overstepped. You did go too far. And I don't believe she has anything to do with a four-year-old being in therapy for something that you claim all happened when she was an infant. She is in physical therapy for hip dysplasia, which she struggles with due to Natalie dropping her when she was an infant. She also has significant trauma from the severe neglect. I'm not doubting the physical issue. I'm doubting the therapy. You said she lost custody for neglect when she was an infant. Were you hyperbolizing, or was she actually under a year old? No, she has suffered major emotional trauma from the extreme neglect. She has night terrors, and she doesn't know how to explain them. It's play therapy for now, but we will transition to talking later on. NTA. You have been this child's mom. You? Biomom can't just come rushing back into the child's life on a whim. She lost her rights, I assume, by court decree. That means that if she wants her rights back, she has to go through the courts and prove that she has changed. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. You do have the right to react like you did. But since Lucy is in the dark as to who this other woman is, you would have better served her by just telling the woman to get out of your house. These comments may be used against you later with relatives and the courts, although who knows to what effect. It's still going to be a headache for you. The judgmental comments, while I agree with them, are something you do not technically have the right to make yet. Once you are married and better established as a family unit, you will have a better leg to stand on. While I hope Bio Mom gets her head out of her arse and gets her life together, I don't have much faith in that. If you eventually are allowed to adopt, please do so, as that child needs you. Keep up with being the good mom that you are, though. Lucy is aware that she came from another mommy's tummy and that I'm an adult who loves her and whom she considers her mom. She is aware that she has a biological mother, and that I am not her biological mother. She doesn't know her biomom is Natalie. If she got clean, Brendan, and I would want Natalie to meet Lucy. Okay, that's fair. When this woman gets clean, well, you stepped up to be a mom when you didn't have to. Once you get married, that will solidify your right to claim to be Lucy's mom. Time will build on that. While I doubt that biomom will get clean in time to have any real relationship with the child, while she is still a child. I also worry about how this woman will behave once she actually does get clean. I've personally seen too many recovering addicts who have some bizarre notion that now that they are clean, all will be right with the world. They will get custody, and everything will go their way. I hate being a pessimist. Like I said, though, keep being the good mom that you are to that girl. That is the positive, good, and right thing to focus on. She is currently not attempting to get clean. Her mother told me this. Not enough information. So where was the father when the mother was neglecting their child? And how has it come that the father's been dating you nine months after the birth of his child? He was in Kuwait. He's a veteran. My hospital room was right between the mat ward and the PICU. So I was an adult who was alone and surrounded by kids. And I had my grandpa drop off my consoles at the hospital due to an extended stay. Lucy was suffering from health issues of her own. We met while I was playing Assassin's Creed II in one of the quiet rooms. Okay. I saw your update where you wrote that Lucy's mother is no more than an egg donor. No, she is more than that. She gave birth. And by your logic, you are no more than a caregiver. Lucy deserves to know who her mother is. And the best thing everyone around can do is help her mother stay in Lucy's life. 
her father decided to abandon his wife and the mother of his child. When did her problems with drugs start? Before or after she gave birth? He had no idea what was going on. He did nothing about it. He decided it's better to go bang another chick and have a fresh start. Esh. She was never his wife. Her problems with drugs started before his deployment. And well before Lucy's birth, he did not know because she hid it from him. When he found out, he had her rights severed. Well, I want to apologize. It's a triggering theme for me. And now I understand why. You're going through a rough period. I wish you to stay strong. Taking a kid to a safer place is a good decision. Accepting a kid who is not blood-related to you is not something everyone might do, and you're a good person. Calling a woman who gave birth an egg donor is awful. But people say even worse things under emotions. Your reaction is totally justifiable. I can imagine Lucy's mother is suffering. But if she can't help herself, she doesn't deserve to be around. You are not the arsy hole. I am. You're not an arsy hole for a trauma response. Happy healing. Info. Have you or your dad done anything to help this victim of the opioid epidemic? Or have you only demonized them and nothing else? Has the bi mother been given a chance to change and improve her life? How did they get addicted? Just to clarify, both Natalie and Lucy are victims of the opioid epidemic here. Being a victim doesn't necessarily make the mother in any way blameless. But how those around her acted and supported her is very important context here. She started taking opioids at parties, not due to injury. I know because that was a piece of evidence that led to her rights being taken away. Update. Hello everyone. It's been a very interesting few days, and I have an update. So a few days after she crashed the party, Natalie got arrested and arraigned for possession with the intent to sell an illicit substance. From what her family says, the substance was cocaine, not opioids. Lucy is doing fine and is loving her first year of kindergarten. My fiancé asked her if she wanted me to become her mama on paper. She said yes, and now we're planning on taking family vows at our wedding. We are getting married on the 15th of December, as that is a very significant day for us the day Brandon and I officially started dating. We have spoken to a lawyer, and he has told us that even if Natalie got clean, she would never get her rights to Lucy back, so we don't need to worry. I hope she gets clean in prison. I want to add that even though I am not Lucy's biological mother, she will always be my daughter, and Brandon and I are not going to have children together so she'll be our only kid. Thank you so much for your support and your criticism. Third story. I said I don't care. She lost her baby, and her boyfriend abandoned her after she became a deadbeat, despite raising her for a year. I-20 and my sister-23 have been very close since she lost her baby. She lost the baby at the end of 2022, when she was about five months pregnant. Obviously, our whole family was shocked and very supportive initially. However, I really tried to help her through this, and get her back on her feet. She came to her apartment to clean and cook her food. It also doesn't help that her baby daddy left shortly after. My sister was unable to work because of her depression, so my family would help chip in and pay her bills. She remained like this for about seven months when my parents told her that they couldn't no longer support her, when all she does is lay in bed and smoke a lot, like 24-7. But they don't know that, and that she at least needs to look for a job. She lashed out and said she needs their support now more than ever. Regardless of them, I began solely supporting her. Mind you, I still live with my parents and attend school. That brings us to last Friday. I have about three semesters left of school, and money has been getting tight. I told my sister that I really needed to start saving, and that she needed to get a job or just move back in. She lashed out at me, saying that I could never understand 100% true, and that I was a terrible brother for even mentioning it. I said, excuse me. I've been paying for your bills for over a year and have been the only one trying to help her get over this? She began yelling at me and calling me terrible names. I just snapped and said I don't give a f about her dead baby. I did none of this for that baby. I helped her because I love my sister. I want what's best for her, and I want her to recover. I told her this, and just then she started attacking me. I just left. The next morning, my parents sat me down and told me what I said was very wrong and rude. I explained what happened, and how I still continued paying her bills after they stopped. They were just quiet, and then they just left. My mother grabbed my shoulder and told me that my sister had started applying for jobs. I really feel bad, but to a certain degree, it worked, and she is at least looking to work. I know my sister will forgive me eventually, but I still feel bad. Ada. Relevant comments. Commenter. You shouldn't have said you don't care about the baby, but. 
but she was clearly in a hole she had no intention of climbing out of. And sometimes the only way to help people like that is to toss in a stick of dynamite and blast them out. Which is precisely what you did. The question is how much it helped. And I have a feeling the answer is, not a whole lot. Ash, especially your parents. For essentially letting your sister vegetate in a pot of grief, rather than getting her into some kind of counseling or therapy. OP. You bring up an off-topic point. She has been in therapy since shortly after losing her baby. So I'm wondering why the therapy has had no progress. And how her therapist is just fine with her like this, without offering additional help. Idik sorry. OP clarifies in a different comment. BTW. I have paid for my sister's therapy off, and on since she lost the baby. And solely after my parents cut her financially. Commenter downvoted. Are you a child? You have to be if you think therapy is a cure-all. Many people spend the rest of their lives dealing with problems in therapy. OP. No, personally, I don't think therapy is for everyone. But it's annoying to think about how I paid for her appointments and see no progress. Commenter. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it isn't there. OP. Yeah. But when you pay for it for a little less than a year, you'd want to see some progress. I don't know, I'm not mad at her, but rather at the waste of money I spent on therapy. Regardless, I'll see her tonight, and I'll ask if she feels any improvement from the therapy. Deleted commenter. Even if there is a 1% improvement, it should be worth it. Something like this can take months or years of forever. Why TA for expecting grief to be fixed with your set time limit, and talking about wasting money when you claim you spend money out of love? You also probably ruined her progress toward getting better with what you said to her. While I get that it's frustrating on your end financially, there are better ways to express that. Perhaps you might need therapy as well. OP. I think my tone was off. Honestly, I don't care about the therapy or even paying for it. In my mind, I rationalize the price of the therapy for the improvement of my sister. But when you see that price, it just looks terrible when you don't see improvement in over a year. I'm not mad at her or the therapist, just aggravated, ick. Commenter. I'm going to be the oddball and say yes, ah. With that being said, I totally get why you snapped. But as someone who has miscarried before, it was the most painful thing I had ever gone through. OP hey, don't feel odd or outcast in your opinion. All the comments benefit me and help me reflect. OP ends with. My sister is going to come for dinner, where we will talk about what happened. If you guys are interested in an update, let me know. OP is voted Ash. Everyone stinks here. Update comment. Next day. Update. I am very thankful for all the women who shared their experiences and gave me an insight on how my sister is feeling that I would have never been able to have. For that, I am extremely grateful. My sister came over for dinner. We didn't make much contact in the beginning. Our parents didn't try to make us talk or bring up our last argument. Dinner was very awkward, with very little conversation. We finished eating, and my parents left to clean up the mess which left me and my sister. We had some small talk when I just offered to go outside to talk. Once we were outside, I immediately apologized for what I said, but she cut me off before I could finish. She said she was thankful for me and everything I have done for her. We continued to talk till it was late. She brought up how she applied for three jobs in our area. We ended our conversation talking about how stuff happens and that sometimes you can only do anything besides pick yourself up, move forward, and try not to look back. She hugged me no tears, said thanks, and left. I will still continue to pay her bills until she gets back on her feet. The bad blood seems to be gone. At this point, I'm not sure if I regret what I said, but the damage doesn't seem impactful. I appreciate all the people who commented. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.